So when it comes to renting versus buying, you guys have heard the concept that rent money is dead money. Well, I just want you to check this out. So let's look at my suburb, Glenmore Park. We have the median property price. The average price here to buy is $760,000, with the average rent is about $510. So if we look at that $760,000 loan amount over a 30 year period at 4.5% interest, paying both the principal and interest, so paying the interest off that's associated with the, the loan you're getting, and paying a little bit off of the actual house amount too, our weekly expense our weekly payment is going to be $888 for that $760,000 house in Glenmore Park. The whole amount that you'll pay over the 30 years is $1.3 million. And the whole interest amount of that will be $625,000. So that $760,000 house is going to cost you an additional $625,000 in just interest. So let's go over those numbers again. We have per week to buy, your payments are gonna be $888 versus renting at $510 per week. The difference, $378 per week. Over a 52 week period, we have 19,600. Now if you were able to save that difference over five years, then you'd have $98,000 in savings. Not in taking into account any interest you might get in the bank uh, or its value uh, in terms of inflation. Now I know $98,000 sounds like a lot to save in five years, but if you can afford to buy, you can definitely afford to rent. So I know some of you are thinking, yeah, but what about the price of the house going up, the capital growth? You haven't talked about that. Let's look at that. So we've got $500,000 as your starting point. Just working with easy numbers so we can see the point. $500,000 is the, uh, the value that your house is going to start at. We've got 10 year period, we've got it going from 500 up to a million. So your house is now worth a million dollars, which is great. You've got $500,000 in equity, but all the other houses around you are also worth about a million dollars. So your house is now worth a million dollars, which is great. But the only way that that can change your lifestyle is if you sell. It has to actually be an active investment. Now, if that's the house that you live in, the only way that you're gonna be able to change your lifestyle is sell and move to an area where houses are worth less. But that may affect your friends, family, your current job or where your business is located, pretty much your whole life. You have to be able to be able to move completely away from the area that you're in to actually have that capital growth change your lifestyle. Okay, so what are we going to do? I don't feel comfortable working my whole working life and not having anything to show for it. Well, if we look at this $98,000 that you could have saved over that five year period where you rented instead of bought, that can now be invested. And it doesn't have to be invested in the $760,000 house in Glenmore Park. It can be invested anywhere because you don't need to live in the same location that you're investing. If you're invested in, say, at Bathurst, where the average house price is about $380,000, that would attract a rental income of about $320 per week. You can have that rented out. The mortgage, the uh, principal plus interest that you'd have to pay each week if it wasn't being rented is $444. So if you subtract the rent that you'd receive, you'd come up with a $124 difference. It would cost you $124. If you combine that with renting in the Glenmore Park house for $510 per week, you're still gonna come out about $250 cheaper than if you purely bought in the Glenmore Park area for that $760,000 house. You can have a house that you're renting out, plus still rent in the location that you want to live for about $250 cheaper than if you just bought in Glenmore Park at a house uh, of $760,000. Okay, so the elephant in the room. If you are choosing a $380,000 house, it probably isn't going to experience the same amount of growth as if you were to buy in Sydney where capital growth is coming at a higher rate. But it does depend on which period that you're buying in the market. 
If you've experienced a large amount of capital growth recently and it's likely to flatten out or even go into a small decline, that's not a time that you want to be buying in an area that is potentially overinflated, as in the housing prices are actually higher value than what they're really worth. If you have a correction, it could be a decent correction given the house value is so high. And the other part about buying a cheaper house for an investment is on that $760,000 house at 4.5%, if we have a 1% increase in interest rates, your weekly repayments for that mortgage go from $888 to $995. That's a $107 increase per week from a 1% increase. At $380,000, your weekly repayments of $444 go to $497. That's a $53 increase. That's a lot easier to deal with if interest rates do go up. So personally, we choose to rent where we want to live and invest where we believe the biggest upside is for as little risk as possible. And when you have an investment property, we have tax deductions. So the interest on the mortgage, the maintenance of the house, and the real estate fees and anything else associated are all tax deductible items which are not tax deductible if you're living in the house that you um, have chosen to buy. So with any investment, it's always good to know all the numbers. So just quickly, on the first home buyer's grant, on that $760,000 house in Glenmore Park, if you did receive a $10,000 first home buyer's grant, it's 1.3% of the house's value. It's really nothing to jump up and down about. Yes, it's handy to have the 10,000, I'm sure we're happy to take it if you are already gonna purchase a property, but don't rush into the market if um, the first time buyer's grant is gonna disappear or it's gonna be reduced. That's not enough of a reason to be jumping into a property or not. And just quickly, lender's mortgage insurance. So that's um, the, you know, roughly on a $500,000 house, you might pay $10,000 as an upfront cost, um, which insures the bank if the house falls in value and you can't pay the repayment. So if the $760,000 house drops in value, it goes down to $720,000, there's a $40,000 difference. At that time, you lose your job and can't make those repayments. The lender's mortgage insurance covers the bank for that $40,000, that's, that's the difference. It does, it's not mortgage insurance, it doesn't cover you if you can't uh, make your repayments. So I just want to cover that quickly because I know that's one of the things that uh, gets misconceived really easily. So hopefully that basics on some real estate investing helps you guys out, it's something that we've learned and it's been really helpful for us. Um, and hopefully it takes a little bit of stress off you guys as well. A lot of people really do want to jump into the market as quick as possible for fear of missing out. Um, there are so many different options out there guys and if you are looking to uh, have an asset going up in value, it doesn't have to be the home that you're living in. There are other options and it can take so much stress off when you realize that.